Falcon Heavy is one of the most powerful rockets ever built with a payload capacity of up to 141,000 pounds. With 27 engines on its first stage capable of producing over 5 million pounds of force, the Falcon Heavy is no doubt a massive rocket. And let's not forget about the best part, the synchronous landing of the side boosters. Unfortunately, however, despite spending about 7 years developing this rocket, SpaceX has only flown the Falcon Heavy a measly 3 times, and though they have a couple of launches planned for next year, it's likely that Falcon Heavy will only fly a single digit number of times before retiring. So what happened to Falcon Heavy? Well, starting off, the first major reason that Falcon Heavy hasn't seen too much flight time is because it didn't exactly adhere to the proposed timeline. This is completely understandable because developing rockets, especially one as large as Falcon Heavy, is an extremely difficult task. At the same time though, a lot can happen during extended development periods, which can significantly reduce the originally anticipated need for the given project. Elon Musk announced the Falcon Heavy way back in 2011 with a projected payload capacity of 117,000 pounds. Aside from this, he planned that the first Falcon Heavy launch would take place in 2013. If we were to be conservative, we could double the proposed time frame, and a reasonable expectation would be Falcon Heavy taking flight by the end of 2015. But unfortunately, this too wouldn't materialize. You see, SpaceX was making rapid progress that would make such a timeline quite feasible. But they would run into some major obstacles with their Falcon 9 rockets in 2015 and 2016, which would of course take priority. In 2015, a Falcon 9 rocket would disintegrate soon after launch, and shortly following this incident in 2016, a Falcon 9 would explode on the launch pad during a routine static fire. This led to the infamous clip of Falcon 9 seemingly exploding before even launching. Aside from this, the incident would unfortunately lead to the loss of the payload, which was the MO6 communication satellite, coming in at a massive price tag of $195 million. Evidently, these back-to-back -back issues with the Falcon 9 raised some concern regarding the reliability of the Falcon 9 rocket. And considering that commercial Falcon 9 launches are a significant portion of SpaceX's revenue, ensuring customer confidence in the Falcon 9 was their top priority, which inadvertently pushed back the Falcon Heavy to 2017. And as you would guess, after some more to-be-expected delays, we saw the Falcon Heavy launch on February 6, 2018. The launch would be spectacular and go down as one of the most iconic rocket launches in history. However, there was one small blemish, which is that the core booster would fail to land and would instead crash into the Atlantic Ocean. But despite this, SpaceX would be able to line up two commercial Falcon Heavy launches that were planned for later in 2018. Though these wouldn't actually take place until mid-2019, with the last Falcon Heavy launch taking place on June 25th, 2019. There are four Falcon Heavy launches scheduled to take place in 2021, but we'll have to see how many of those actually come to fruition. Something that's super ironic though is that SpaceX is yet to launch the first Falcon Heavy contract they received. In May of 2012, Intelsat gave SpaceX their first Falcon Heavy launch contract, but Intelsat would actually go bankrupt earlier this year, so I'm not sure this will ever take place. Anyways, as you can see, during extended periods of development, your customers may lose interest, find an alternative, or go bankrupt, thus slashing original demand. Moving on, aside from taking a significant amount of time to develop, the Falcon Heavy is quite a bit more expensive than the Falcon 9. Falcon 9 launches cost about $62 million, while Falcon Heavy launches run up to $90 million per launch. Now, from a value perspective, the Falcon Heavy is the clear choice, as though it costs one and a half times the Falcon 9, it can lift nearly three times the payload. But the thing is, the volume of the payload is identical between the Falcon 9 and the Falcon Heavy because the fairings are the same. As a result, the Falcon Heavy doesn't actually provide any volume benefits to the customer. The only reasons one would choose the Falcon Heavy over the Falcon 9 
is if they have an extremely dense item that cannot be handled by the Falcon 9, which is quite rare, or they need to launch their device much further into space like GTO, which is the intended use case. Falcon 9 can only carry 22,800 kilograms to low Earth orbit, but Falcon Heavy can carry the same payload plus more to geostationary transfer orbit. But really, how many customers need to reach a GTO? Today, we have been accustomed to SpaceX Falcon 9 launches every two weeks or so. However, commercial launches are actually still quite infrequent. The high frequency of Falcon 9 launches can be explained by SpaceX themselves launching their Starlink satellites into orbit. As a result, when commercial use of the Falcon 9 itself is not too frequent, you can see why Falcon Heavy is rarely the choice of commercial customers. But then, why did SpaceX even develop the Falcon Heavy, knowing that there would likely be lackluster demand? Well, the answer is crewed missions deep into space. Falcon Heavy was designed to take astronauts to the moon and even potentially Mars. Here's the thing, Falcon 9 didn't really make sense for crewed Mars missions, as the payload capacity to Mars is quite small at 8,860 pounds. While that may sound like a lot, when you factor in months of supplies, exercise equipment, sleeping areas, toilets, showers, and much more, Falcon 9 isn't really all that feasible for Mars missions. Aside from this, we also have to keep in mind that a Mars mission will require several supply runs to Mars before embarking on a crewed mission. Now, as we discussed before, Falcon Heavy wouldn't really make the trip less cramped. But you could carry over 4 times more payload to Mars at 37,040 pounds if you're able to fit it into the fairings. As you can see, Falcon Heavy was expected to make Mars supply runs much easier. And as for crewed missions, up until 2017, SpaceX planned to send two astronauts on a one-week trip around the moon in late 2018 using the Falcon Heavy. However, in early 2018, Elon Musk would knock out the idea of using Falcon Heavy for crewed missions around the moon or potentially to Mars, in favor of using the upcoming BFR or Starship rocket. And that brings me on to the next major downfall of the Falcon Heavy, which is rapid development of Starship. The thing is, Starship far outperforms Falcon Heavy on basically every front. Starting with payload capacity, Starship is expected to be able to carry 220,000 pounds into low Earth orbit, or one and a half times that of Falcon Heavy. Theoretically, Starship is supposed to be able to refuel in space before heading to Mars, so it should be able to carry the full 220,000 pounds straight to Mars, or six times that of Falcon Heavy. Anyways, the case for Starship becomes even stronger when we look at payload volume. The Falcon Heavy fairing is 17.1 feet in diameter and 43 feet in height. Treating the payload like a cylinder, we get a payload volume of upwards of 10,000 cubic feet. Meanwhile, Starship provides nearly four times as much payload volume, coming in at 38,800 cubic feet. Lastly, the nail in the coffin for Falcon Heavy is when we compare the launch price of each of these vehicles. Elon Musk projects that Starship may cost as little as $2 million per launch. Even if we quintuple that price target to be conservative, Starship would still only cost $10 million, which is a ninth of the cost of Falcon Heavy. Putting this together, a six times larger payload capacity along with a ninth of the launch price means that Starship is 54 times as efficient as Falcon Heavy. Considering this, it's a no-brainer to wait and use Starship for not only low Earth orbit Starlink launches, but also massive supply runs to Mars, thus essentially making the Falcon Heavy obsolete. Now, despite all of these massive advantages, SpaceX hasn't fully signed off on the Falcon Heavy just yet. Elon Musk has revealed that he's open to use Falcon Heavy for crewed missions if Starship development takes longer than expected. But Starship development has been moving along quite smoothly indeed, and its first major flight test may be complete by the time this video comes out. Aside from this, SpaceX has been quickly building up their Super Heavy booster prototype at Boca Chica, and it is possible that they may even reach orbit using Starship by the end of next year. However, 2022 or 2023 may be a more realistic time frame. Nonetheless, for the rocket industry, that's just around the corner. And with that being said, it's quite unlikely that Falcon Heavy will end up being used for crewed missions. In the meantime, 
Falcon Heavy may prove useful when it comes to research missions funded by NASA. Earlier this year, NASA announced that they would be using Falcon Heavy in a mission to a metal-rich asteroid in July of 2022. So, fortunately, we'll be able to see the beautiful double booster landing for a few more years until Falcon Heavy is fully retired. At the end of the day, Falcon Heavy took significantly longer than expected to develop. It serves a very niche audience and purpose, and Starship is rapidly coming to take its spot. And that's why we haven't seen very many Falcon Heavy launches thus far, and likely won't moving forward. Will you guys miss Falcon Heavy? Comment that down below. Also, drop a like if you guys are excited for Starship as an 8 to finally perform its first high altitude flight. And of course, consider joining our Discord community to suggest future video ideas, and consider subscribing to see more questions logically answered. But until then, I'm Hari, and I'll see you guys on the next one.